a consent agenda meeting going. Um, it is 201. It is August 23rd, 2022. Um, welcome to our two o'clock consent agenda meeting. Um, let the record reflect that all three commissioners are present, present today. Um, we do have, uh, I think now it's seven people that have signed up to testify. We normally allow 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do today is go ahead and allow all seven people to testify. So we'll extend our 15 minutes. Everyone will have three minutes, but I will not be taking any other open uh, comments at this time since we were extending and we've got a health board meeting that we need to get to, a special meeting at 3.30 today. So, um, so since we've got another meeting we've got to make sure we get to, um, I think that's how uh, we're going to handle it today so that everyone who has um, identify themselves as testifying, we will take those and I will, I will go through those in order. Um, so I will start with our open public forum. I will let um, people know that we did receive no written comments today. Um, and so I will start the open public forum. You will have three minutes, um, I believe at the timer. I, and I appreciate that Commissioner French was here the last couple of meetings since I had to be out of town and call in um, to handle that for me. So we're gonna stop, start with Mr. Stockwell. And if you'd come up and just state your name and, and address for the record, that'd be great. Hello, my name is Glenn Stockwell. I live at 2204 East Gordon Avenue in Spokane. And I'm the chairman of Washington State Economic Development. I'm here to speak to you about uh, your participation with the city of Spokane. Uh, 90 years ago, the city of Spokane and the county worked together to bring the largest economic development project to Washington State in its history. It was only half completed. Uh, I know that Al had experience in uh, as an engineer and stuff. We live in an economic world and the most I've ever gotten on private funding for my own project was 107 million. So I know how to jump some hurdles. But the uh, right now since August 10th of 2021 there's been $1.2 trillion sitting on the federal table for projects, for bipartisan projects. I'm asking you both as an entity to work in a bipartisan fashion so we can acquire the money for that project. And uh, it would be a project that would last for 20 years and uh, we would expand the project. There's more money available. And so I would hope that you would agree to work with the uh, City of Spokane and Mayor Woodward uh, and uh, on this project and also Kathy McMorris Rogers so I hope that you'll do that thank you for your time thank you so next I have Shannon Corrick And if you'd please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Shannon Corrick, C-O-R-R-I-C-K. My address is 735 West 1st, uh, apartment 1E in Cheney, Washington. County Commissioners, my name is Shannon Corrick, and I'm a member of the Spokane Alliance through UFCW 3000 as a community organizer. I work closely with members and the community to help those with needs find resources. We represent over 50 thousand members across Washington State, with about 8,000 of those being in the greater Spokane area. Our members are essential employees in grocery, health care, and cannabis. I'm here to urge you to match investments from the city and the valley, allocating $4.5 million of the county's ARPA dollars to early learning and child care, and I'd like to share with you a few stories. Investing in early childhood learning is important because in every facet of our union, our workers are struggling with child care. Sometimes they can't find it. Child care is often not available for people who work later shifts. A member, Jen, has difficult finding, difficulty finding consistent child care when she works late shifts at Rosar's. She says even if child care was available at the hours she needs, she probably couldn't afford it as she makes just above the amount to qualify for assistance. Another member, Erica, explained to me that she has to make the choice between work and child care. She also makes just a little bit above the cutoff for assistance and was faced with the choice of voluntarily cutting her hours to keep herself poor enough to get the assistance she needs 
or to work full time and rely on friends and family to take care of her children. She reported that this year she feels the oldest is mature enough to watch the younger ones after school. The relief in her voice that she explained that she felt her children were old enough to care for themselves was palpable and heartbreaking. There's also John who is a grandparent. He maintains his position in the produce department, but the care for his grandkids falls on his wife who is older and in poor health. They plan to retire soon, but find themselves in a spot where she's the caregiver full time for young, several young children and John's daughter simply can't afford daycare. Also, she couldn't find a center that has any room for an infant. And I'd like to finally tell you about one former member. Rachel worked at Safeway as a checker and was an excellent employee. A few months ago, her hours got cut and what she was working strictly paid for daycare and her husband's job paid the bills. They decided it was a bad idea for her to work just to pay for daycare and have nothing for expenses, in addition to having no time with their children. What they chose was for her to quit to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. They don't have childcare issues anymore, but we lost a good, strong member in our union. Workers in every industry across the country are struggling. They struggle with housing, food, and transportation, and Spokane County has the opportunity with these ARPA funds to help a broad swath of the community. This is why we are urging you to work with the experts, the providers, families, and communities directly impacted with the child care crisis and find short and long-term solutions. Specifically, we need to now the affordability for working families, workforce support, and behavioral health for these kids. Thank you so much. Thank you. So next I have Sarah Struthers. You, you can do it. Deep, deep breath and then just so, state your name and, and address for the record. Uh, my name is Sarah Struthers. I live at 10, 1018 West Dalton in Spokane. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Sarah Struthers. Uh, my children attend Little Scholars Development Center. I am a single mother of three, ages 15, 7, and 6. My family has been through many hardships, but Little Scholars has been there fighting by my side every step of the way. My youngest child, Bashlin was delayed in hitting her developmental milestones from birth. The staff at Little Scholars, including my, her teacher, Jamie, gave Dashlin as much caring one-on-one -on -one time and attention as she could. They knew that if we were going to get Dashlin extra help, she'd need medical diagnoses. So they documented everything from her growth. I had two folders full of documentations for doctors and was consistently dismissed. They told me that she's fine, she's too young to be diagnosed. Most doctors didn't even look at the notes I brought from the child care center because they're not medical professionals. Instead, well, sorry, while this went on, Dashlin's development delayed, showing severe signs of autism, sometimes hitting others without knowing. I brought Dashlin to the doctors to be evaluated every three months for four years. Every single physician refused. Instead of focusing on Dashlin's behavior and health, they focused on her gender and her skin color. They said that girls are naturally delayed and dismissed my concerns. My daughter is black, and I have watched so many daughters stop, doctors stop caring about us after seeing my daughter doesn't have the white skin color. Finally, when Dashlin was five years old, she was diagnosed from everything from autism to prediabetes and ADHD. I left that appointment with 50 different referrals and follow-up evaluations. When I reached out to some of the services, they told me that Dashlin was too old to enter their program. I did everything I could to get her diagnosis early, but the healthcare system failed my family. Three years ago, I was diagnosed with final stage kidney failure. I rely on disability so that I can receive dialysis treatments three days a week for five hours a day. I chose to live instead of work, and this means I disqualify for state subsidies for child care. The only way I can afford child care is to file a CPS case on myself and get her enrolled in the public school system, a system she was not ready for. At school, she was supposed to have an aide who stays with her all day. Instead, she hops between 10 to 15 different people every day. She can't build trust with anyone. She has been traumatized by this level of inconsistency. We have had 
If we have had a mental health specialist at Little Scholars five years ago, my daughter would have received the care she needed. Centers like Little Scholars need every form of support they can get to, con to continue to provide for families like mine. I've been told that there's sales tax at the county level that could be used for mental health services for early learning. I also know that families like mine need financial assistance to be able to keep our kids in, in small supportive environments. When they aren't ready for public school, we are asking to work with you for you to work with us to find solutions so that what happened to my daughter Dashlyn doesn't happen to any other family. I apologize. I just left dialysis, so I don't feel too well. <laughs> You're good. Thank you. Thank you. So the next person is Jamie Tate. Okay. Hi, my name is Jamie Tate. I started working at Little Scholars in 2014 as an educator where I'm now the program manager. Um, I always knew I wanted to work with kids to be there for them in their most critical and vulnerable moments like I was for Dashlin. As Sarah explained, I have been Dashlin's, by Dashlin's side her entire life. When Dashlin entered public school, I was called every day by the school to come provide one-on-one -on -one support, providing the resources she needed and deserved all unpaid. I am still helping Dashlin with her transition into kindergarten, which will now be first grade, um, while being a mom of three, um, a full-time student and a full-time program manager, all while supervising or surviving severe stress in my own personal life as well. So this, um, this system has failed to recognize the fullness of my experience as a person outside of my responsibilities to my students, and I'm exhausted. Dashlin is just one child of 50 families at Little Scholars that rely on me and my coworkers for safety and development for their, for their kids. I am tasked with providing the absolute best care for these kids within a system not set up to support me or my coworkers. Every single industry in Spokane relies on childcare. So why aren't we investing in the people keeping it stable? I am a full human being nurturing and protecting our kids. Your kids. I am underpaid, under-resourced, and unrecognized by the larger community. My love and devotion to kids keeps me going, but the love competes with the intense challenges I face every single day. We struggle to keep teachers sometimes for more than two weeks because of the toll of their emotional well-being in this field. I am a single mother of three kids, and I know how important consistency and stability is for my family and how deter or determined inconsistency or detrimental inconsistency can be. The early education workforce needs to be invested into. Our mental health directly impacts our ability to be consistent in the classroom. I've been told that there's sales taxes at the county level that could be used for mental health resources for early learning. I hope the opportunity becomes a reality and also want to highlight that the workforce needs additional investment if early learning is going to survive in Spokane. If you want your kids to receive quality education, nurturing love, and all the resources they need to be successful, then begin with the giving the begin with giving these or those some things that, um, to their teachers. We need it and we need it now. Thank you. So next we have Kelly Crawford. Hello, I'm Kelly Crawford. I live at 1711 East 14th Avenue. Um, I am an elementary uh, specialist with Spokane Public Schools. I am also a mother. When I was pregnant, I knew that it was wise to lock down childcare early. I thought I would be extra prepared to start looking in January for a uh, September start. I figured, well, nine months is about how much time most families have for notice. Should be no problem. However, call after call told me, no, there are no openings. We have no availability for your child. Um, a few that did have openings were way out of my budget uh, because websites often do not display what the cost is. I was shocked to receive call after call quoting me at $1,600 a month, $1,700 a month uh, for infant care. I personally am on the highest uh, salary tier for Spokane Public Schools. I have a master's degree. I have over 90 credits for professional development yet those would be nearly 40% of my take-home pay. Uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services considers affordable childcare to be no more than 10% of your household budget. Through friends and family, luckily I was able to find a childcare uh, facility that we love 
that is within my budget, but it is still nowhere near 10% affordable. And as a building union rep for the Spokane Education Association, I know my childcare struggles are not unique. Our amazing paras, our secretaries, nutrition services, um, all of our early career educators, uh, far too many are forced out of the profession because they simply would be losing money to have childcare. These staff shortages hurt our entire community. It increases our class sizes. It reduces our ability for one-on-one -on -one instruction. It uh, forces staff to take on even more responsibilities, which then contributes to increased burnout and makes our problem even worse. Our educators should not have to choose between a family and a career with our students. Our community deserves amazing, dedicated people within our schools. And to do that, we need affordable, accessible childcare options. With funds from the American Rescue Plan, we could do so much to lessen this burden and raise up all of Spokane. Please take this opportunity to invest in our early learners. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Kira Bauer. Good afternoon. My name is Kira Bauer. I am located at 14621 East 13th Avenue in Spokane Valley. I'm a member of the Spokane Alliance through Little Scholars Development Center LLC where I'm the managing member. Little Scholars Development Center was founded in West Central Spokane in 2009 and currently continues to serve that community and many others within Spokane County. We value diversity both ethnically and socioeconomically and are committed to equitable preschool experiences for all. Kindergarten readiness is a non-negotiable for our students. We work with our families and at times even the school districts, as you heard Jamie mention, to ensure that each student that graduates our program has the needed tools and skills to succeed in kindergarten and beyond. I'm here to urge you today to match the investments from the city and the Spokane Valley by allocating 4.5 million of the county's ARPA dollars for early learning and childcare. Investing in early learning childhood learning, or excuse me, investing in early childhood is important to me because without immediate action from the county, the childcare crisis will continue to grow. Middle income families are in need of tuition assistance now more than ever. With the rising costs of rent, of groceries, and of gasoline, if we can even speak that word without paying for it, um, our middle income families are left with the unfortunate choice of paying for childcare leaving their children in unlicensed care, or leaving the workforce altogether. Without the county matching both the city of Spokane and Spokane Valley's investments, child care centers will not be able to hire the support staff our classrooms need. We have two-year-olds, three-year-olds that are not socio social, emo do not have the social emotional skills that they need to get through um, their average preschool day. A lot of that has been brought on by COVID and the need for additional behavior and social emotional attention and guidance that at our current ratios, we just cannot, we just don't have sufficient staff for. Without you three county commissioners investing in the ways that our, your constituents have repeatedly stated they need the most help in, our centers will not receive the stabilizing mental health supports that they need to provide such psychologically safe environments for both their students and teachers. Now you've heard from Sarah and you've heard from Jamie, our center manager, exactly how vital these funds are and how we need to have them now. Long-term long solutions are being worked on at a state level and hopefully even at a county level. However, we're still a minimum of one to two and a half years out before we're expecting to see any real long-term relief coming. Work with the experts, the providers, the teachers, the families, the communities directly impacted by the child care crisis. I'll simply say that I've held teachers in their classroom as they've broken down for fear of being in their classrooms because of COVID. I've ran after children who have needed a safe space um, because they're not used to being in large groups any longer because of COVID. Uh, we need help. We need it now. Your own poll has told you that your constituents know exactly what is needed and where that money is. So we're asking that you commit to matching the funds that the city and the Spokane Valley have already provided 
give us those funds so that we can stabilize the workforce of childcare and so that we can continue to do the work we've already been doing of stabilizing this economy. Work with us and work with us now so that we can get this done. Thank you. Uh, the next person I have is Austin London. Um, close. <laughs> uh, my name's Austin Loudon. I uh, live at 1908 West 8th Avenue. Um, I work with UFCW 3000 as a union rep, um, and we represent, as Shannon said, 50,000 members in Washington and about 8,000 members in the Spokane area. Um, we're here to urge you to match the investments of the city and valley of the $4.5 million of the ARPA funds um, to go to funding early learning and child care. Um, Investing in early child care is important to me um, because it will not only affect, you know, countless members of my institution, um, but also num a numberless amount of families, you know, in my uh, community. Um, I worked at Sacred Heart in the food and nutrition department for about five years before coming on to staff at the UFCW. Um, in those years, in my department of about 20 people, uh, we had five single mothers that were um, working full-time to just pay for child care. Um, they were forced to either, you know, stay at home and not make any money to watch their children or go to work and their paycheck went almost all of it to child care. Um, child care and then rent and food, obviously. Um, these employees represent the lowest paid employees um, within the hospital, uh, the food, nutrition, EBS workers. Um, which is a vast majority of our members within um, UFCW in Spokane. Um, these employees make just enough not to qualify for the assistance um, that they need, uh, but they're still barely able to afford for the child care that they you know, really need to be able to survive. Um, that is why I'm urging you to work with the expert providers, uh, the families, the communities um, directly impacted by the child care crisis to find short-term and long-term solutions specifically affordability for working families, support for the workforce, and behavioral support for the children. Thank you. Thank you. And that is the last person that I have. I want to say thank you all very much for uh, testifying today. I'm going to close the open public forum. Um, again, with the fact that we have another meeting at 3.30 that we have to get to at the health district. Um, I'm not, I've, I've extended it, I don't know how long. Um, beyond our 15 minutes and so at this point I'm going to close it. I've taken everybody that uh, put their name down and um, will not be taking any more uh, public testimony at this point in time. So with that then we will continue our agenda and I will look to my fellow commissioners. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I would move that we approve items uh, 2A through uh, 2H uh, on today's agenda. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve items number 2A through H on today's, as presented on today's agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will lead us to, we have four public hearings on items today. Um, Mr. Zarekor, are you going to Give us a briefing. We'll start with item number 3A, which is to consider the vacation of County Road, uh, Corkery Road Extension, County Engineers Road, file number 1900 for Spokane County Public Works Department. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, next slide, please. So the first vacation we'll be talking about is on Corkery Road Extension. And you can see on the vicinity map, it's kind of in the southeast corner of the city of Spokane, and it's up on the side of Browns Mountain, if you're familiar with that, where that is. And you can see even by the picture here, um, the winding roads, it's very, very mountainous. This is a very old road right of way. Uh, next slide, please. The gentleman petitioning for the vacation is the person that owns the home that you can see partially underneath the existing road right of way. This road right away terminates here and does not extend outward. We have looked at the area. It's extremely mountainous. There is not the potential to connect to other road right of ways. And even a connection for a fire apparatus only type road would be essentially prohibited. It's a very steep terrain. 
So now I'll read my engineer's report. Um, this report is required per the RCWs. The, the road as we described it is a private driveway in essence. It terminates at this residence and is not maintained. The, the right-of-way only provides access to this applicant and they've signed the petition requesting it. This segment of road has no foreseeable public transportation need and again the topography is very mountainous. Uh, it is the opinion of the engineer that considering the absence of general public need both now and in the future it is in the public interest to vacate this segment of road and I will stay for any questions and turn it back over to the commissioner. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Zaracor? Seeing none, thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing, so I will open it up, uh, the public hearing for item number 3A on today's agenda. Anyone wishing to testify on number 3A? Second call for anyone wishing to testify. Third and final call, seeing no one online. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify. I will close the public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of the county engineer uh, with regard to uh, the vacation of Corkery Road uh, extension, county engineer's road file number 1900 uh, for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I will second the motion. <clears throat> okay, I have a motion and a second to accept the county engineer's uh, recommendation for item number 3A. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That will take us to item number 3B, which is to consider the vacation of County Road Lakeview Boulevard, County Engineer's Road File Number 2416 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, next slide, please, Aron. Uh, you can see on the vicinity map, this is out kind of in the southwestern portion of the county along the side of Clear Lake. And next slide. What is being proposed is to vacate the red highlighted area that's existing right of way between these lots. These lots are common ownership east to west. So the northern two lots that you see there, the parcel numbers, are the same ownership and the southern two parcels are the same ownership and essentially what they'd like to do is they have built houses along the lake and the existing right-of-way is very close to their home so they're proposing a vacation and change to swap out the existing red right-of-way for the orange right-of-way shown and as part of that they'll be constructing a, a roadway that will meet the needs of the fire department and any other services trying to get through there are several other residences to the south so what we're proposing, and we have a new resolution that we've shared with Gina for the board's consideration. And as part of this, um, Spokane County staff will verify the construction of the road prior to recording the, the new road right-of-way and vacating the existing road right-of-way. So all that's in that resolution language. Um, they have been out, they've started the clearing work, but they have more work to do. So we will wait until that roadway is completed before finalizing the vacation and change being proposed. So again, I will quickly read my report here. Um, as discussed, there are several residences being accessed by this existing road right-of-way, so we need the assurance that the new roadway will be built. The right-of-way is approximately 50 feet wide and about 200 feet long, and that's the red area shown there. And again, it's the primary access for a number of lots, and this is a vacation and change, so we're going to replace one right-of-way with the same right-of-way area to the east. It is the opinion of the engineer that considering the, that the road right-of-way will be replaced and the roadway will be built to a standard that's acceptable, that we should support this motion. And I'll turn it back to the commissioner for any additional questions or comments. Any additional questions? Commissioner French. Yeah, Mr. <coughs> Zirikor, uh, thank you. Uh, great presentation. Uh, the one question I have is the um, uh, right-of-way that we are um, uh, going to end up with after this transaction is fairly close to Clear Lake Road. Um, is Are the lots that are left between the new vacated road and Clear Lake, are they buildable lots so that they could be sold or are they going to be smaller than buildable lots? I think virtually all of these lots are buildable. They okay. do have to provide septic systems and there's some 
some complications and some considerations inside of that and they also typically have to provide their own wells which again complicate things on the small lot but generically per our code for the county building code they are buildable lots okay. and there are a number of them running along this section it's a very old plat mm -hmm. any other questions so I guess I just want to make sure so when you say there's a new resolution is that um, it's it's what was published correct yeah we did add language to that resolution regarding the construction of the roadway and that's the resolution that Gina has okay, so that you stated yeah. okay perfect thank you that was I just wanted to clarify that that what was what the, what the change was and that you discussed the change then yeah. so thank you um, so with that, I will look to my fellow. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now I will open this up for public comment for item number 3B, um, as noted on today's agenda. So we do have somebody who wants to comment. Okay. So Eric Sletten. Yep. If you could please state your name, pronounce properly, and your address for the record, that would be great. You came very close. Eric Sletton, uh, 7835 North Debbie Lynn Court. Um, so I guess the only, my uh, mom and I are the two people kind of impacted. I guess we have the lots uh, just south of the um, proposed road. So we, we don't have any issues with the road. I don't, I don't know kind of exactly what the um, process is here, but... Um, the uh, homeowners who are who have proposed to make the change, they've done a good job and they've um, put in a new road. The only thing I guess that we would ask is maybe some additional time because we are having to kind of change our driveways based on where the new road is going to be located. So I don't know if the process is, if it's six months or what, what it might be until when um, the engineers would go out and I guess kind of view the road and sign off on it, but I guess we would just maybe ask um, maybe through the springtime just so we can kind of see that the road is settled and there's not any issues with water or, you know, anything like that. But otherwise we are, we're happy and um, we're okay with it. Very good, thank you. Second call for anyone wishing to testify. We have somebody else. Okay. Um, so we have Tim, and Tim, I'm going to have you pronounce your last name. <laughs> so Tim, there, you think you're unmuted? Tim, we can't hear you. There we go. We can hear you now, Tim. So if you can please state your name and, and address for the record. Uh, yeah, Tim Ewick, uh, 2021 West Chandler, uh, nine, uh, medical. Yeah, you're breaking uh, up quite a bit. Uh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can barely hear you. Sorry. Uh, did you get my address? Um, no, if you could state that again. 20021 West Chandler Avenue, Medical Aid 99022. Yeah, we can just barely hear you. I'm, I'm trying my best. Did you, can you still hear me? Yes, just barely. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, we own one of the lots, uh, one of those two lots. My brother owns the north one, I own the south one. Uh, they're owned by us. Uh, well, there shouldn't be any problem with buildable, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't know if you can speak louder or into the microphone more, but we can just, you know, we can catch just a little bit, not not the whole thing. Uh, let, me, let me keep trying. Let me try. Okay, so yeah, we I I own one of the lots, um, and 
this new driveway will be you know straight line with what's existing already uh, going up to the road on the on the north side. Are you still with me? We can yeah. So so yours. I guess I'm going to interpret. See if I can help. Um, so you own one of the lots that that's yeah. proposing the uh, the change in the road. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. And so then, like I said, the, this new this new road will be in line with the existing road up north. I don't know if you can make that out in the picture. Um, but anyway, my my question was. Uh, in, in the new language, they said uh, that it will be built to uh, acceptable standard. Uh, is that is that the city standard or who's standard? So I will let uh, Matt Zarekor answer that question because that is um, what the standard that he's being held to. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And he is definitely one of the homeowners that's requesting the vacation, just to confirm that. And as he pointed out, we are in alignment with the existing driveway. Actually, it's we're going to term it a fire apparatus road. It doesn't meet private road standards. That's a pretty large lift for them to get to that requirement. But it's also not a driveway. It accesses more than three lots. But we do have the ability to reference it as a fire apparatus road, which is somewhere in the middle. And we'll give everybody enough room they can safely pass. And, you know, it'll give us all the consideration we need to make the roadway safe and appropriate. And as the other homeowner pointed out, they had concerns about the spring because there's a lot of water around just being the West Plains. So they would like to see how it performs. And we have the language in that resolution saying that it's up to six months and we can take that time to look at it through the spring and make sure it holds up well. And our staff, Jeff White, one of our technicians has had a conversation with the homeowners next door that had the concern and he's also watched the construction. He's one of our construction inspectors, so he's very familiar with construction and construction practices. And he'll go out once they've constructed the road and make sure it's adequate. And we'll also coordinate with emergency services and make sure it meets their needs. Okay. Mr. Elk, does that answer the question? Uh, yes, yes. But uh, another uh, uh, suggestion, I guess, is I, I want to put gravel down here uh, very soon. I mean, I'll want to put fiber down and uh, gravel. So I'm trying to get this kind of driven on, I guess, as much as possible once I put it down where we can pack it down, you know, versus just let it sit for, uh, I don't know, half a year. So I'm just publicly saying that it's okay to buy from this. Uh, okay. Um, I think yeah, we caught yeah. most of that. Um, with the public hearing, um, we're at the point where I'm going to cut us off, but I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask the road engineer if, you know, with, with the questions and concerns that are happening, um, do we need to delay this uh, to make sure that everything's addressed or, or are you comfortable that everything can be addressed with the resolution in front of us? Yeah, I'm comfortable we can address all these concerns with the resolution. You know, we can watch it again through the spring and if we need to g gain additional written agreement on what might need to be done additionally. But um, they do have a point. It would be good for the road to be driven on over the course of the next six months because that does pack it down and that's also the only way you can truly see if it's going to hold up in the spring so you know if he's able to complete the road soon it would make more sense to complete the vacation and change and possibly put in some kind of surety or a letter commitment for additional work as needed we can okay. work through those details but i think it is addressed in the resolution very good thank you yeah so is there anyone else who wishes to testify on item number 3B, which is the vacation of the Lakeview Boulevard? Yes, we have one more person. I can't see her. Okay, so Mr. Bogdans? Yes. Yes, so you you are now up to testify. If you can state your name and address for the record, and then we give you three minutes. Sure. 
Yeah, so my name is Bogdan Elick, and I live at 20015 West Chandler Avenue, Medical Lake 99022. And you can start your testimony. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I just basically want to just add a, a thank you so much for Eric for his concern and all that, and thank you for working with us. Um, I'm one of the owners who's, um, on whose lot it's going to be that road is, you know, is proposed to be moved. Um, just, uh, something that I want to just kind of air out so that people kind of know is that, um, the main th reason why we do this, I think is because just for the safety of our, of our children and pets, because, um, we end the dust as well. It's just, yeah, there's just plenty of traffic on that road. Um, and the farther it is from our home, because I've got five kids, my brother has five kids and so plus pets. So we kind of just want to keep it safe and keep the dust kind of at bay. Um, this may, that's why the, the main reason why we're doing it, and I think we'll do our best to get it all, you know, to stand to standard and stuff like that. So I think we'll work together with Tim and make it happen. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on item item number three B? I am not seeing anyone else, so this is final call for an, anyone wishing to testify on item number 3B. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of the county engineer uh, with regard to the vacation of uh, Lakeview uh, Boulevard, uh, identified as county engineer's road file number 2416 for the uh, Spokane County Public Works Department. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to accept the recommendation of the County Road Engineer for Lakeview Boulevard vacation. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to item number 3C, which is to consider the vacation of County Road Randall Road, County Engineer's Road File Number 1502 for the Spain County, County Public, Public Works Department. Department. Thank you, commissioners. This next vacation you can see is in the northeast corner of the county. It's up actually in the foothills of Mount Spokane. Oh, it's on. I'm not talking loud enough. Yeah. Is that better? Okay, I'll get closer. And as you can see here, Randall Road is climbing up the side of the mountain there. You can see the small red line. That's the location of the actual vacation. Next slide, please. So, so this, this is common ownership. Um, these, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's the next one. This one is not common ownership. There is a plan to do some boundary line adjustments after the vacation, but we you can see we kept that small notch just to the west side of the red line. That keeps them technically um, access, so we aren't landlocking parcel by the motion, but they do have other plans to boundary line adjust these parcels after the vacation occurs, but that just keeps it legal in the meantime. So, so I'll read my report, report one more time. time. Um, again, again, the report, report is required for the vacation per County Road Resolution 16-0570. And, and this is a platted but unopened portion of the right-of-way. There's never been a road on this portion of right-of-way to our knowledge. And you can see the portion in red is what will be vacated. The right-of-way is 40 feet wide and 320 feet long. And there currently, again, is nothing on this right-of-way and we see no foreseeable public transportation need for it. Uh, it is clear that the route road was routed to the north due to topography, and it is the opinion of the engineer that considering the absence of general public need, both now and in the future, it is in the public interest to vacate this segment of right away. And I'll stay available for any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, then I will open up the public hearing uh, for, for the, the vacation, vacation of County Road, Road Randall Road. Road. First, First call for anyone wishing to testify on item number 3C. Second call for anyone wishing to testify. I'm not seeing anyone online. I'm not seeing anyone in the audience. So third and final call for anyone wishing to testify on item number 3C. Then I will close the public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of the County Engineer to uh, vacate uh, County Road uh, Randall Road, identified as County Engineer's Road File Number 1502 
for the uh, Spokane, Spokane County, County Public, Public Works Department. Department. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second for item number 3C on today's agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That takes us to item number 3D on today's agenda, which is to consider the vacation of County Road, uh, which is a portion of an unnamed right of way in the Platte Spring Grove, County Engineer's Road File Number 2408 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. Thank you again, Commissioner. Uh, you can see again from the vicinity map here, this is in the southern portion of the city of Spokane. On the right, you can see that that hatched area is actually City of Spokane, which wraps around both on the north and the east side. And there's a small plat up on Victoria Lane there, and that's what we're talking about today. Next slide, please. So this is a zoomed in aerial of the property, and you can see this one is common ownership, all the parcels, and the red vacated area is what we're proposing to vacate. And I'll read our report here. This report is again required uh, for a petition to vacate per county code. The road segment for this is platted, but again, unopened. There's never been a roadway in there to our knowledge. And the vacation is shown in red. The right of way being proposed for vacation is 30 feet wide and approximately 300 feet long. And there's no foreseeable future public transportation need for this right of way. And this one in particular on the east end vacates into a very deep draw that both the creek and the railroad line run down. And then it's about 90 feet deep and 150 feet, so it's extremely deep. We never have any plans to extend it is really what I'm driving at with that. So it is the opinion of the engineer that considering the absence of general public need both now and in the future, it is in the public interest to vacate this segment right away. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. So with that, then I will open up the public testimony to consider the vacation of a portion of the unnamed right of way in the Platte Spring Grove. This is item number 3D on today's agenda. Is there anyone wishing to testify? I'm not seeing anyone in the audience or on the screen. Second call from anyone wishing to testify. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify. Okay, seeing none online or anyone coming forward, I'm gonna close the open public testimony and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of the county engineer to uh, vacate a portion of unnamed right away in the plat identified as Spring Grove, county engineer's road file number 2408 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. Well, I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second for item number 3D um, as presented on today's agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. motion passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Zerikor. I appreciate all your uh, information there. Um, so that concludes our two o'clock consent agenda. Um, Mr. Simmons, is there anything else that you have? I do not. Okay. Um, then we will sign some documents, and we as commissioners are also on the health board, and there is a special meeting at 3.30 that we will be attending. So thank you all very much, and we will see you next week.